A proposed bill to put the Western Wall under jurisdiction of the rabbinical courts and chief rabbinate of Israel is causing major backlash among the Israeli population. The legislation put forward by the Shas party would criminalize progressive prayer practices and even fine or jail people found to be in violation. Joining me today to discuss the implications of the bill are rabbis Nir Barkin and Ronen Neuwirth. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank, Thank you. you for inviting us. All right, so my first question is uh, for you, Ronen. What are the ramifications of placing Haredi belief structures uh, over the Western Wall? Uh, I have a major issue that we do not learn from our history. About 2,000 years ago, this place was destroyed, and that's why we have only the Western Wall and not the entire building, because of baseless, baseless hatred, because of Jews hating each other, <coughs> fighting with each other, Jews from different opinions, different outlooks, different de denominations or streams. And we repeat the very same mistake. Uh, by the way, from both sides, from bo both bo vocal sides, it can be from uh, Haredi, from the left side, instead of speaking, instead of talking, instead of trying to negotiate, and we had a compromise, we keep fighting. And I, I see this as something destructive for, for the future of Jew Jewish people, especially that place, the place of the Western Wall, should be a place of unity, a place where each and every Jew can dive in, each and every Jew can pray and find the way to connect to God through the place which belong to, belongs to each and every Jew. And by the way, I think that in general, um, any legislation that is preventing someone from, from praying is something which is uh, anti-democratic. Even the fact that Jews cannot pray on Harabite, on the Temple Mount, mm -hmm. uh, it's a place that also belongs, every, every other uh, person from whatever religion that goes up to the Temple Mount can, can pray, and Jews cannot pray in that place, which is an absurd. That's a halachic issue also. It's, uh, there are places where, uh, where you can go up on, on the Temple Mount. The reason, uh, it's because of the, uh, because of, uh, the laws of, uh, of the, the police and the walk, uh, people cannot uh, carry any prayer. That's, uh, it's illegal to carry prayer on the Temple Mount. I think in general, regardless of the political outlook, uh, especially a place like this, it's supposed to be a place that each and every Jew, each and every person can, can, can pray uh, with respect, without fighting with each other. And that's, I think, the, the biggest issue that we are repeating the very same mistakes of the past. So, uh, Rabbi Barkin, how, how would you respond to that? Well, I think that uh, the law will not pass at the end. This is another attempt of the Shas party to show its power and, and try to fight within the government itself about issues which uh, are important for them, as, as we heard from, from the rabbi right now. It's important for them and only for them. It's not looking at the entire population of Israel and the entire Jewish world and their uh, connection and, and, and interest within the Western Wall. Um, I agree with the rabbi that, um, that we, have to, we have to learn from the past and we have to make sure that the lesson that uh, has been told to us uh, 2,000 years ago is well taken. I think that the uh, compromise agreement that we reached about a year plus ago is something which, uh, which learned from the past and apparently the Haredi parties are not following it. So I, I want to touch on that in a little bit, but first, you know, the issue is ex this issue is extremely important to freedom of expression, as we've stated earlier, uh, both in and outside of Israel. So, you know, passing this legislation would surely drive a wedge between Israel as, you know, a government, as, as you know, a monolith, if you were kind of to group Israel into one thing, and world Jews. Um, you know, how do you, what do you expect the aftermath to be should this law be approved? Well, if I may answer first, uh, the, the, the aftermath will be or already happening. Uh, as we know from our uh, 1.8 million uh, liberal Jews around the world who are, who are already uh, vocalized about the, the fact that uh, they feel disconnected with the state of Israel because of the actions of the government. And, and this is something which cannot happen. We cannot create a, uh, a, a kera, a, a, a dispersed and, and, and a split between Jews who live in various places around the world. The state of Israel is not just the state of the Israelis. The state of Israel is the state of the Jewish people around the world as well. And therefore, we have to uh, make sure that the split doesn't happen. And they feel very uncomfortable. As the director of diaspora affairs in the reform movement, I can uh, report firsthand of, of the, of the uh, tension and, and the discomfort, and even more than that, that comes from overseas communities. Have you been getting a lot of feedback? We're getting a few feedbacks every day. 
uh, about this issue, and, and uh, then the question is why are they indifferent about what's happening in the, in the state of Israel? Well, if we are pushing them away, it's, it's, it stands for itself why at the end of the day they're feeling unconnected and, and, and indifferent about it. Rabbi Neuwirth? So to begin with, I'm an Orthodox rabbi. I believe in the Orthodox uh, halacha and tradition, uh, which I believe is crucial for the existence uh, uh, of the Jewish people, for the future of the Jewish people. Nevertheless, we cannot neglect the reality. And uh, I'm not speaking now about Israel. In Israel, the majority of Jews, even the non-observant Jews, are going to uh, Orthodox uh, communities, and therefore the situation is different. However, when we relate to the di diaspora Jewry, as, as the rabbi said, a uh, majority of them are, uh, do not belong to the Orthodox. Uh, and those who are, who are affiliated, majority in, in many, definitely in, in the United States, are affiliated with the reform movement. And it, it has been proven in the Pew Report and other reports that if you belong to any denomination whatsoever, the chances of assimilation are lower than uh, if you're completely unaffiliated. And therefore, uh, it is crucial for us, for the Jewish people, for the state of Israel to recognize and to, uh, that there are other den denominations, there are other ways. And again, I'm saying this as an Orthodox rabbi, I believe in the Orthodox halacha. However, there is importance for the existence of the other uh, denominations in places like in the United States. They, are, they can reach out to many, uh, many Jews and keep them within, within the framework. And if the state of Israel is completely neg neglecting these denominations, uh, it's something which uh, can cause many issues like uh, BDS or disconnection of uh, s some communities or some leaders from these den denominations from the state of Israel, from, from the Jewish people, is something that can have, a, uh, for the long run, a crucial effect of the state of Israel, the support, the security, and so on and so forth. So, you know, to play devil's advocate, you know, putting myself in the Shas position, Maybe they were trying by enforcing these laws to bring people towards those laws, to, towards accepting them. Do you think it would have that effect on anyone? Well, definitely. No, sorry, yeah, right, def I definitely. I, I don't know what their reason for putting out the law. I think uh, ca calling for attention is cer certainly one of the one of the par uh, parameters that they're looking for, but it's not the only thing. And I think that's their ideology, and their ideology is very dangerous, both for the state of Israel and, and the relationship between Jewry around the world and the state of Israel, which is, which is devastating, because um, it, when, we, when, we, when we, both Rabbi Nuvert and myself, look at, at the Jewish world, we consider everybody to be Jewish, and we are happy in a way, in the way that each one is practicing their their practices, because that's what makes Jewish life so rich. Uh, the Shas party don't consider it this way, and, and I think what they're causing is a big, big uh, pullback or, or pushback for uh, world Jewry from the state of Israel, and uh, the state of Israel really looks bad when it comes to them. I, 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 don't, I don't believe that they have in their slight mind that someone would be more affiliated with them except for their own people. Uh, mm. uh, ex, uh, as a result of that. And I think another thing which is very crucial for us uh, to mention here, we know that word, words have power. And, and when they're claiming uh, their, uh, I would say, dictatorship over the Western Wall, I think they're also pushing towards uh, realities like the one happened last week in our synagogue in Ranana, where the knife was put there with a life threat. Uh, murder uh, to to our leaders of our community, both Rabbi Kariv, Rabbi Jacobs, and Anat Hoffman, and and their words are causing a big danger for for our existence. So um, I'd like to I'd like to end the interview in just a few minutes. But uh, the first thing is, you know, like we like we talked about earlier, and I wanted to touch upon this: the agreement to create an egalitarian prayer space um, at the Western Wall was already passed a year ago. Um, and it was, you know, celebrated all over the world, especially by world Jewry. Uh, how do you feel about the original compromise? And, uh, you know, why, why is that, why is creating an egalitarian space separate from the Haredi Orthodox spaces such a, you know, slap in the face to, to the Shas party or, you know, the Haredi Jews? 
So first of all, I think the, the compromise was a fine compromise. Uh, it respects the people that usually go to the Western world to the Kotel, their practices the, with having a partition, a mechitza, and I think this is a very fair compromise, uh, which should have been um, kept and, and, uh, and practiced. Uh, by the way, I also think that within the central uh, area, central plaza of the Western Wall, uh, there should be an extension to, to the women's section, which is very tiny and very small and very squeezy. Uh, uh, it, has, it has to be bigger. The number of women coming to the Western Wall is not less than the men. However, uh, it, I think the compromise that was achieved to have a separate place to whoever has different practices in order to enable all Jews from all kinds of, of from all, uh, <coughs> all kinds of denominations to, to find a place near the Western Wall, I think the comprom compromise is good and uh, it's, it's pity that uh, now people are trying to revert it. So, you know, do you think that they see this as an attack on, on Judaism? You know, like the, the they were part of the agreement. The Haredim were part of uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's uh, government when the agreement was signed, and therefore we certainly know for fact that they were part of, negotiate, of the negotiations. Once this, the, the, the compromise was, was signed, um, some reporters from the Haredi world have brought it to their rabbis within the neighborhoods of Jerusalem, and then the, the whole inflam inflammation started, the whole, the whole fight uh, began all over again. They were part of it to begin with. I agree with uh, Rabbi Nuvert. It's, it's, a, it's, a it's a good compromise only because no one is really happy about it. It, it. it demands all of us to come and say, okay, it's not all what we wanted. We wanted to pray mm -hmm. at the main plaza where everybody else is praying, but we are accepting the fact that we will pray at Keshet Robinson, at the Robinson's Arch, with the main entrance like everybody else, and then access to a larger plaza yeah. uh, where, we, where the compromise is showing. That's fine with us, but right. you know, now that we are withdrawing from the original compromise, we, are, we have to go back to, to the main plaza, and, and as we see, it causes a lot of troubles. Yeah, well, I mean, for me personally, I think the compromise was the best option simply because it is a compromise. Um, but, uh, and you know, nobody, nobody wins when no compromise is, is had. So uh, on that note, since we're all agreeing, uh, I'd like to end the interview. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a pleasure for me. Thank you.